Once upon a time, well after dark in a wood-paneled classroom of East Pine Hall during my junior year, one of my friends, a fellow English major, looked up from her laptop and asked why we bothered studying stories. Growing up in the 21st century United States, we'd been told over and over again that the humanities were impractical and inviable. What could a paper close reading some novel or poem actually do for anyone? Why do stories matter? My friend's question was a genuine one. Looking at the world around us and recognizing the increasingly urgent need to combat oppression, colonization, and climate change, then speaking with students whose research led to policy proposals, computer programs, and biomedical discoveries, those of us in the humanities, or heaven forbid, the arts, wondered what we could contribute. My friend's question points towards something called motive, a core element of writing I was introduced to at Princeton through my first year writing seminar, and I continue to examine as a fellow working in the writing center. In writing, the motive is the central puzzle, gap, or tension that drives your work, making it original, high stakes, and meaningful. Motive is multi-layered. It is simultaneously the catalyst for your research, the gap within the scholarly conversation you aim to fill, and the implications that make your work matter. That night in East Pine, when my friend asked why we bothered studying literature, she was inviting a discussion of motive in our individual research and in our discipline as a whole. What I valued most about my time at Princeton is the opportunity to shape and discover my motives, both those driving my academic pursuits and those directing my life more broadly. What are the questions I return to again and again? Who are the thinkers I want to engage in conversation? How does what I do matter, especially if what I do is centered around studying and sharing stories? The first time I witnessed these layers of motive converge around the study of stories was as a student in the Western Humanities sequence. The Hume sequence introduced me to texts and thinkers across humanistic disciplines, from Homer to the present day, that I continue to recall, employ, and critique. In addition, the driving questions of my own research began to emerge. I consistently centered my essays around certain themes like gender, sexuality, power, and poetry. In conversations with my astute professors and thoughtful peers, I grappled with the broader questions of why and how to study these works when our syllabus was so clearly and excessively dominated by the voices of white men. Many texts not only bore evidence of oppressive ideologies, but also directly fed them, providing justification for atrocities such as slavery and genocide. These texts prove that stories do, in fact, matter, and their implications and influences can be disturbing and dire. My extracurriculars taught me as much about storytelling as any class, providing spaces for me to learn from my peers and develop my voice. As a writer and editor for the Daily Princetonian, I learned to tell stories about real people with empathy, integrity, and respect. As a leader of the Wesley Foundation, a progressive Christian ministry, I thought critically about the stories that shape my faith and how interpretations of those stories have led to both oppressive and liberatory theologies. I worked to make the Wesley Foundation an affirming community in which members could approach the texts of our faith with their full selves, feeling supported in asking questions that didn't have clear answers. Through the vibrant performing arts community and comprehensive programs in theater and music theater, I've confronted the question, why this story, here and now, and experienced the moving power of embodied storytelling? When I performed in a production of Fun Home, the musical based on Alison Bechdel's graphic memoir, Audience members approached me after the show with their own stories of coming into their queer identities or processing their dysfunctional families. Telling our version of Allison's story allowed audience members to see themselves and their families in new ways, opening space for reflection and conversation. During this challenging senior year, marked by the COVID-19 pandemic and persistent acts of racist violence, I've turned to stories for solace and purpose. This past fall, I, along with five other Princeton students, reimagined my senior thesis in theater, a new play called Unbecoming, within the university's COVID-19 restrictions. We somehow staged and filmed the production in the backyard of an Airbnb during the 2020 presidential election in the middle of a hurricane. As we struggled to make the play happen, I was torn between the immense privilege of making theater during this troubling year and the intense labor required of us in order to do so. My written senior thesis, a collection of short fiction, pulls together what I've learned about motivated storytelling. My collection explores how we code difference as monstrous and envisions how monstrosity can be reconfigured as a place of power and possibility. 
I spent this past summer honing my motivating questions under the guidance of Professor Autumn Womack, who told those of us in her summer thesis seminar, whenever you want to say that something's interesting, rephrase that sentence as a question. I positioned myself among interlocutors from past and contemporary fiction, historical archives, and literary criticism, and I kept asking, why do my stories matter? After four years guided by mentors and classmates, I can confidently answer why stories matter. They are products and producers of culture, shaping our perceptions of others and of ourselves. Studying stories as carriers of culture, like historical records, economic trends, and political movements, allows us to unpack what they invite, if not encode, us to believe. But beyond this fundamental articulation of the power of stories, I leave Princeton with more questions than answers. Yet these questions are of a different type than those I had when first walking through Fitzrandolph Gate. Rather than leaving me lost or unsure, these questions connect to my underlying motives, serving as signposts and litmus tests, engines and roadmaps. I'm grateful to my Princeton education for the chance to develop my motives and to gain the confidence to construct strong questions when encountering tensions, gaps, and puzzles throughout my life. Though I started these remarks by separating my discipline from others, we all study stories to some extent. Whether you're a microbiologist or an art historian, you ask questions and seek some sort of narrative to provide an answer. Moreover, we often operate as storytellers in family conversations and on fellowship applications when we're asked to reflect on the past behind us and prophecy the next chapter. The motivating questions I've developed at Princeton give direction to my story. I know they will be revised, but my core curiosities and the community of mentors and peers serving as my interlocutors will sustain me through each chapter of my life. As I repeatedly return to the question, why does this matter? I will draw upon the critical and creative skills I've gained at Princeton to respond in ways that make my life original, high stakes, and meaningful.